I would like us to start with, I guess, a practice, a practice piece, something very simple, <clears throat> something a little bit smaller scale, and it will just be a square, just like this one here. Uh, this is really aimed at people who've never felt it at all before. However, if you have felt it before, this could be a good refresher exercise. It's only going to take us about 15 minutes. Use your pause function on the recording. Um, when I say things like, oh, you need to spend five minutes doing this, I'm not going to make you sit there watching me do something for five minutes. But what you will need for this little test square test piece is, obviously, some wool fibres. And if you've bought one of my kits, you will have six grams, it's about six grams of wool that you're going to need. You will have this in your kit and it's going to be the fibre that's, as this one is here, lots of colours all blended beautifully together. Um, it might not be this exact colour mix but it'll, it'll be the one that is colour mixed and blended in this way. The other fibres that you've got in your pack will be solid colours for you to use and this whole amount will be six grams, it'll be marked in your kit. If you're providing wool yourself then I would just go for roughly an amount that is squashed up into your hand like this. Okay, so once you've got some wool fibres, you're going to also need a template. And this is a good rule of thumb. This is what you're, you're always going to do for any, any felted flat piece that you do. You're going to need to plan out how you're going to lay down the fibres. So in this case here, I've just made it as simple as possible, just said if you've got a piece of A4 paper, fold it in half, or if you've already got A5, that's fine, just use that. But that's the size we're going to start with. If you haven't got paper of the right size to be able to work that out it's basically 21 centimeters by 15 centimeters you just need a, a template about that size to start okay and what we're going to do is we're going to lay down this wool fiber and i'm going to show you now how to do that we're going to be laying a la laying down a layer top to bottom and then we'll be laying another layer laying a layer on top left to right so it'll have two layers and you will need to have in any felting project at least two layers possibly three four five depending on how thick you want the felt to be i like my felt quite thin and because this is just a demonstration or a pra practice exercise we don't need to make it any thicker than two layers so because we know it's going to be two layers that's why we're going to divide our wool fibers into two equal halves hoping you can see that. I've got my two halves here and then we're going to pull, tease the fibres apart and this is how we do it. If you just gently, you can see there's a little bit of resistance there for me, I'm going to go, I'm going to just, it's like colouring in the lines, but if you pull too hard, it's a bit like a Chinese finger trap, it, it, won't, it won't come apart because you're just pulling on the ends like a tug of war. You're just pulling on the ends of the fibres. So you need to keep your fingers or, or your hands as soft as possible, as pliable as possible when you're doing this. If the wool is a bit too thick, that's also going to make it difficult for you to pull apart. So just separate it. Just divide it up. Make it as easy for yourself as possible. And the idea with laying down fibres is that you want to go as thin and fluffy and airy as you can. It's better to have less layers, um, sorry, more layers that are thin than a few layers that are chunky. And I'm hoping you can see I've filled down one side top to bottom and now I'm going the other side top to bottom and this final side top to bottom. And we know that we need to use all of these fibres because this is one layer so I can then come back over Pat it down as you go and it'll just make sure all of the air is, is removed from in between. And because I've got a bit of fibre left, I'm now just going to fill any bits where I can see the white paper coming through and I know that it's going to be a bit thinner. Take your time with this. And it's really lovely to just work with the nice fibres. Okay, so that's one layer done. And now we'll move on to our second layer. Same again, just tease the fibres apart, make it easy for yourself. And keep them as light and airy, as fluffy as possible. So you're going to be going in the opposite direction now. So it's up to you whether you want to work in the opposite direction or spin. Spin your template around. I quite like spinning it around so that my hands are always going in the same action. And just do that again. Just go from one side, one side top to bottom and then work your way across. It doesn't really matter how you approach this or how you do it. You just need to, the idea is to just get the fibres laid down as evenly, consistently as you can um, at right angles. 
if, if, for information, if you were to lay the fibres down all in the same direction, the shrinkage happens down the length of the fibres and you would end up with um, a piece of felt that would shrink only in one direction. I don't know if you remember how I showed you this at the very start, it's shrunk equally in the width and the length. If it just goes in one direction, you'll end up with just a thin piece of felt, which might be what you want, you might be doing a scarf. However, it does make the felt quite weak. If you imagine that the bonds that are made between um, fibres that are going across each other are much stronger than bonds that are made in just going in one direction. So generally as a felt maker, you might go four layers. You might go one layer up down and then one layer left to right and then repeat that up down left to right. Nearly finished, just using up the last of my wool there, just teasing it apart, making sure it's nice and even. Pat it down, it doesn't matter if you've gone over the edges slightly, you can actually just bunch it up with your fingers. Don't worry too much. Okay, then the next stage, the next step is going to be to get two pieces of plastic. And I mentioned this in the kit earlier on. So your first piece of plastic goes underneath and your second piece of plastic would go over the top. And this is going to serve the purpose of helping you flip between the top or the face of your felt and the reverse side because it is almost like a 3D item. You are going to need to felt it from the reverse side at some point and it, it helps it felt quicker if you can felt it from the back side as well as from the front side. So get your plastic laid out and just a reminder that this plastic is... 45 by 30 approximately. So just have that to hand, two pieces. It can be even just a cut up carry bag for a supermarket. This is actually, I think, um, from the garden centre. It's from B&Q or something like that. Um, and it's a polythene sheet for, a dust sheet for decorating. And I think it was five quid for 10 metres or something. So that, that's what you will have included in your kit if you've bought one of my kits. It's nice and thin, so it's easy to work with, but any plastic will do. And I'm laying my template now over the top of the plastic. Remember to remove <laughs> your template. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to apply some thread to the surface of your felt and if we just refer back to the original example you can see that thread has buckled and twisted and gone rippled as the wool has shrunk around it and this is mohair, this is a mohair blend, mohair and um, probably got a little bit of acrylic in it. They used to sell it for people knitting baby boots and things like that, I think it was called Debbie's Bliss wasn't it? But the, because of the mohair, the high mohair content, you can see how hairy that yarn is and it's it's just gonna, it's gonna attach to the, to the fibres, the wool fibres like velcro and it's just very good at and adhering to the surface and you can use this in lots of colours, you can buy this in lots of colours you can use this to draw around objects in your work and provide interest, make something exciting. If you've got one of my kits I've included 70 centimetres of this in whatever colour I've had to hand at the time in your kit and this is what I'd like you to do, I mean if you've not got something like this at home don't worry about it, you can probably just use cotton sewing thread, try with that, just make sure it is cotton synthetic yarns won't work so nylon, polyester all of those things that they just they just won't work. They just they haven't got the, the scales. They aren't gonna they aren't gonna stick to the surface. Just add in the wool there on the surface. I've just done mine in a wiggle. It's up to you. You could do it in a line. You could do it in I don't know the capital O if your name's Oscar. You could do any design that you want to. It's just really to demonstrate the point that it sticks to the surface as you felt. Next step is to soak the the laid down fibers with water. For this I'm using my bottle with my holes in the top and I've got some warm water in here and I'm just going to saturate the wool like this and it's actually quite plenty wool, plenty water that you need, you'd be surprised. A common um, thing that big beginners do is they probably just don't use enough water, they're a little bit hesitant because they don't know how much water you should use. The wool, it just will soak up so much of the water that you want to put plenty on there. The other thing that we're going to add then is some household hand soap and I'm just going to go one, two, Three. Just put a few blobs on there and then add the, plastic, the other plastic over the top and pat down. It's 
So at this point you shouldn't have water splaying everywhere. If you have, then that's just a point to note for future to, to, not, to not have as much water as you've added at that point. It should just be patting down nicely. If you add some water onto the top of the plastic, and a little bit of soap, it will allow your hands to move freely and easily over the surface of the plastic. And what you're doing here is you're pushing the water into the wool and you're pushing the air out. And you can be as rough as you want with your hands at this point. And it feels quite nice to do this. Once it looks like the air has been expelled and all the fibres are flat, just give top of your plastic a little wipe down with either your towel or your flannel in this case, I just use an old face flannel. And now we're going to turn over. And do the same on the reverse side. Okay, so you, could, uh, you can hopefully see by now there's a, there'll be a slight change in colour but all the fibres should be soaked through and you can just wipe over the surface to get rid of any excess water and you can see what the plastic has done there all it's done really is it's helped you push the water into the fibres without them moving around because it would just be a, a load of fibres all over the place so you're already already these fibres will have started to felt Okay, peel back, still looking at the reverse side, peel back the layer of plastic, dry it off with your flannel or towel. It's better to keep things dry as you go along rather than waiting until the end and then being left with a mass of wet plastic. Dry it off, just drape it over the back of a chair or something to dry off while we're doing the rest of this process. Okay, so now you're going to start to rub with your hands. The best way I can explain to do this is to put the soap on your hands first rather than directly onto the wool. Rub the soap into your hands and then start to pat over the surface and this will just make sure that the soap is evenly distributed and it was just sort of a, a pea sized blob. Now you're starting to rub the surface with your hands now and I think you can see that the soap is starting to come up and you want that, you want that to be white. Keep your hand as flat as possible. You don't want any um, claw fingers, you don't want any dints, and you basically don't want to be pushing the fibres around. Think of it like you are caressing the surface. You're just stroking the surface. Gradually we're going to work up to being more rough and more rough with this textile, but you can't at this point. You've got to be as gentle as you possibly can. And it should feel very soft and smooth. This is the point where if you're wanting your edges to be as straight as they can, this is the point where you would turn any, any edges inwards. They're going to be on the reverse so you won't see them and they're going to also amalgamate into the, the rest of, of the felted piece. So I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing there. I'm just taking the stray edges and turning them inwards and it will just make the finished piece a little bit neater. You need to do turn any edges in as early as you possibly can in felt making because as it starts to felt they will less likely um, felt and become part of the main body of the felt I guess and it's just the very edges, the very wispy edgy bit. You'll still get a nice natural edge but this will just make sure it's, it's somewhere between straight and wavy. It's up to you though, of course you can leave them completely au natural wavy if you, if you like. Maybe for this test example, maybe fold two edges in and leave two natural so that you can see the effects, the different effects. As you're rubbing, if you find that the fibres are having wrinkles in them like this, it's because you're pushing too hard, you've got too much force on your hand, you need to just let off and be a bit more gentle. And I think you could do what's called a pinch test at this point. If you just pinch at the very corner, you'll be able to see that all the fibres are still coming away from each other so it's nowhere near felted. It's time to turn the felt over so you can make use of this plastic once again and flip onto directly the surface underneath. You're now going to just wipe over your plastic. You're not going to need this plastic anymore. Peel it back, dry that off and drape it over a chair or something like that just to dry off. 
And now you're going to be doing the same on this side as we did on the reverse. You may or may not need more soap. I probably don't looking at this. If your hands are still gliding over the surface really easily without moving any fibres around, I'd say you don't need any more soap. If you're finding that your hands are sticking to the fibres or it's starting to bobble on the surface, you need definitely more water and more soap. I'm hoping you can see how lathered up um, this felt is here. To the other extreme, if you find you've got too much soap and it's kind of a bit unworkable, you can always take your flannel and just blot down and it will remove some of that soap and that water from the surface so that you can carry on rubbing. So the next step involves using your bamboo mat. If you bought one of my kits, you would have had one of these mats included in it. If not, hopefully you've got a mat at home. Um, I would really just invest in, in one of these bamboo mats. It's actually a place mat for a, a dining table. So how we're gonna use this mat is, we're gonna lay it over the top Roll it up, lay it over the top of the felt, hold with one hand the, the flat side and the bit that's rolled up, you just want to rock backwards and forwards. And I'm just going over the top half of my felt here. And if it starts to unravel, just rock, roll it back up. And you want to do 25 rolls. 23, 24, 25. And then we're going to remove it and move it down to the bottom section and you're going to do exactly the same 25 rolls. Now we're going to flip the felt over and do exactly the same on the back side, on the reverse side of the felt. So just take your felt up to the top, cover in the top half, roll for 25. Okay, so at this point you're probably able to do another pinch test and you can, hopefully yours is the same as mine where it's starting to hang together. It's not quite a full textile and if you refer back to your template it's definitely not started to shrink yet. So we're not at the stage that it's a piece of felt yet but we're definitely on the way. So another step now after you've rolled with the, flat, with the felt flat on the table is to put the felt inside your felting mat and roll with it inside. And just to explain the point of a felting mat, the reason for it really is if you imagine touching the felt with your hands you're only getting pressure and contact with the point at which your hand touched the felt but if you've got a mat you're touching it at one point but the pressure is being distributed evenly across the mat so basically it felt a lot quicker. And I've just put my felt inside and I'm just rolling up, give it a shake and again 25 rolls. I'm going to do 25 rolls on my felt four times in each of the four directions. So 25 rolls, then I'm gonna remove it um, and, and put it in, 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 in another direction, rotate it basically. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, well done. You could say at this point that your felt is finished. Lots of felt makers prefer to finish the felt at, at this point before it shrinks any further. Um, I like to continue my felt in to what's called the fulling stage, which is where the majority of the shrinking happens and everything gets very, very tight and you get like a, almost an elephant skin type appearance. It's almost cockled on the surface. I like to take my felt to fully felted stage. I'd say for this demonstration and this test piece for you now, let's, let's do that. Let's take the felt to the maximum. So take it to the sink, give it a good, good rinse rather in some, in some warm water Water, no more soap needed. Just rub it with your hands in the sink, get all the soap out of it. You can squeeze this as much as you want and then we're going to bring it back for the final stage. Well done everyone for getting this far. You've done the majority of the felting now and if we were to take our template one last time you will start to see it's really starting to shrink. So as I just mentioned you can choose, it's quite bouncy, you can choose to just let this dry on a radiator or dry it out with a hair dryer and you could choose to use it in this state, in this form and if you've done a picture it might be that you just like it the way it is and that you're going to stitch into it. Um, as I said before I prefer to take it to fully felted stage and that's what we're going to do now, it's called fulling. So you're going to put this into your mat one last time now and we're going to do the same exercise that we did a second ago. I'm just going to stretch and square, take a few minutes just to stretch and square it off because it's a natural material or, or will, it has a tendency to buckle and kink in whatever way it wants to, it's got a mind of its own. So I've just stretched out where it's starting to come in at the edges, square it off and then we're just going to do the rolling and the rotating one last time, 25 on each side and I'm just going to put a dry towel underneath just to catch any drops that come out. Just a tip, 
you don't need to push down with very much force when you're either rolling with your felt inside or whether you're rolling with the mat over the top of your felt. If you push down with too much force, you're just going to break your mat. They're not, you know, the strongest things in the world. The ones, if you've got my kit, they're kind of triple stitched, so they are one of the stronger ones out there, but you just need to gently rock. So don't apply too much force. It's about friction, movement, more than it is about pressure. And just one final tip, and hopefully yours is, if you compare to your template, it's really started to shrink now. It's really on its way to shrinking. If yours isn't shrinking, you just need to keep going. You've not spent it long, long enough causing friction and, and moving either with your hands or with the bamboo mat. But yeah, one final point to know, if you're finding it's a bit damp and it's a bit wet, then you can optionally, you can do this, lay your felt flat on a towel and just go back to the stage where we're rolling over the top of it with the mat. Again, gently, you don't need to press with a massive amount of force. Just gently rock over the surface, flip over, rotate, do it from all angles in all directions and eventually that will start to dry off. And there we go. I hope you're happy and pleased with yourself. You've completed Felt Project. People felt in different ways. If you looked online, you'll see that lo lots of felt makers like to use bubble wrap. They will lay out their composition, their fibres, all ready, wet them down and then sandwich them in bubble wrap, wrap the bubble wrap up and sit there rocking the, uh, the, the bubble wrap back and forth for say half an hour or so. That's another method you can use. Personally, I find that a little bit boring. It's not for me. But I guess it's the artist in me. I like to have my hands all over the fibres and, and to touch the fibres. That's why the method that I have, that I've just demonstrated to you, is, is the way it is. The steps I appreciate can be very confusing when, when you've never done them before. For that reason, I've broken the, the steps down into 16 points, bullet points, 16 stages. You can either jot these down or take a photo of them on your phone and have them to hand ready when you're felting. If you bought one of my kits, you will have this printed out inside your kit to have to hand whenever you're felting. Keep it in a plastic wallet, somewhere that it won't get wet, and then each step of the way you'll know exactly where you're up to and what you need to be doing next until you become familiar with the process.